Am I the asshole for wanting to put my father-in-law in a nursing home? Yeah, ever since he came back, he has done nothing but the absolute worst. So, like, send that boy back to the nursing home. Send him back. I second that motion. <laughs> Am I the asshole for firing my babysitter? Ooh, I want to hear this. Hold on. Hold on. Hey guys, it's Lisa here, and welcome back to the channel. So I decided to do this video on my bed because, yeah, I'm comfortable, so why not? Y'all know what's crazy? I've had people say that I look like Zoe Saldana from Avatar, which, like, is a major compliment because she's gorgeous. I mean, I personally don't see it, but I'll take it. But y'all, lately, I've been getting that I have an accent, which I don't see. I feel like... What's wrong with this? Dude, that literally scared me. But anyways, as I was saying, I've been getting that I have an accent, which I don't see. Like, some people say I do, some people say I don't. And I'm just like... But I will say that, personally for me, there are times where, you know, occasionally where my accent comes out. And it usually happens when I speak so fast. But you really just have to pay attention. Like, oh, you'll miss it. Because I'd be talking, and they'd be like, oh, I heard your accent. I'm like, oh, my bad. Gotcha, bitch. But yeah, I just feel like you just have to pay really close attention. Guys, I just did my makeup just for this video. Like, actually. But isn't it beautiful? Like, oh my gosh. Wow! Beautiful! Gorgeous. But for today's video, I'm going to be reading some of the... Am I the asshole confessions on Reddit and give you guys my raw, honest opinion. Before I get started, I just want to say, as you all know, Valentine's Day is around the corner. The holiday of love and not just romance, but the love that we have for our friends, family, but most importantly, the love that we have for ourselves. Because self-love is the greatest form of love. Okay. And I know just the perfect way to show some appreciation for yourself for this Valentine's Day, which is by spoiling yourself with some of Anna Luisa's high quality jewelry designs because self-gifting is the new tradition. These designs are uniquely made just like you and they're super affordable, but babes, you are the prize. You don't even need to check the prize. All you gotta do is swipe. Not only do they offer free and fast shipping, they also have a two year warranty on all your products. So make sure you click the link down in the description box and spoil yourself with Anna Luisa's high quality pieces. Not to mention they're up to 25% off, but time is ticking, so don't wait up. Okay, let's get started. Okay, am I the asshole for asking my wife to ask her friend to leave? Okay, what's the background story on this? My wife has a friend, we call her Berta. Berta likes to show up unannounced, often in an emergency and late at night. My wife has been friends with Berta for years and through rougher circumstances. I've seen my wife wake me up and herself in the middle of the night to go pick up Berta from the airport. We, we've offered Berta a place to stay on her couch in the past. The problem is, Berta never really asked, nor does my wife. I show up, she's already there. And my wife asks if that's okay. She uses her bathroom to get ready for work, but doesn't ask if it's okay. Berta even stays the night. Berta has stayed a few nights now. Each day, waits until evening, and I say something, and my wife says that the day is included and asks him to stay for the night. Then another night passes, I come home, after a stressful day and expect to get some privacy, I go to the bathroom and Berta is sleeping in my bed with my wife. Bruh. Talking about their day, I passive aggressively text my wife that I had to take a massive stinking crap and I hope Berta doesn't mind hearing or smelling it. Both got upset. I feel like my boundaries and consent is being violated. I'm tired. I just want to be home at peace. I just want to be gross in peace. I want quiet again in my home so I can grade. I want to watch my shows in peace. My wife thinks I'm being cruel 
that I have too many rules and she can't have friends. Only today she let me know Berta is houseless and has nowhere to go. So I guess she's staying longer. My wife says since it's her house too, I can't say what happens with her guest. Money is tight for us as it is. I support us on my own income and Berta uses a lot of electricity while I'm at work and eats our food. I'm upset my wife didn't tell me this before I said yes. I want my wife to have friends. I really do, but this friend overstayed her welcome. Am I the asshole for asking my wife to make this friend leave? Okay. See, as a person who values like personal space and just likes their peace, I totally understand you on that one. I don't think you're the asshole. Your wife is actually the asshole because first of all, she has no respect for you or your boundaries and just lets her friend do whatever she wants in your home that you pay for. Are you kidding me? And second of all, Berta, you're a grown ass woman. What are you doing? The thing is that the wife is letting her. So like, the wife is the asshole, okay? In my opinion. <laughs> yeah, y'all need to have a serious talk. And your wife need to get it together. Mm -mm. I would be so annoyed because like, uh uh, please get out of my house. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Sh I'm saying. Okay, let's do another one. It might be asshole for not allowing my parents to cook meat in my home. Okay, I am 24. I have been a vegetarian for several years. My parents decided that I could either eat their food or buy my own. And I have bought my own food since I was 16. There were times they could have easily made minor changes so I could eat with them, but they never did. They don't really accept me not eating meat, especially my dad. Anyways, they needed a place to stay near where I lived, and after some pushing, I agreed to let them stay with me for one weekend. I got several options for them for food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and da 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 da. These are all the things they can eat and enjoy eating in the past. I provided more for them than they had for me, but according to my dad, it wasn't enough. He insisted on going on to buy some ground beef to mix into the chili second evening. I told him he's free to go out to eat, but he can't cook in my kitchen. Okay, I don't think you're the asshole. You're literally just matching their energy because at their house, you eat whatever they cook. Or go buy your own food at your house you're gonna eat whatever i cook or go buy your own food I am the one, the way you're trying to and that's just on period uh, no bob okay another one why the asshole for refusing to let my teen drive a car given to her by her father my son now 21 was given a car for my ex-husband's grandmother it was newish condition hardly ever driven but when it came time, my son drove it to the point where the car now needs new front and a rear struts. Rather than fix the car with the inheritance he received when she passed, my son decided to get a newer used vehicle. The car has been sitting in my ex-husband's and is now being offered to my daughter, 17 years old, who just yesterday passed her permit test. Am I the asshole for telling my daughter that her father needs to fix the car? before he gives it to her to drive and I'm not allowing her to drive it until it's fixed. Let me just add, I don't feel that I should be the one to fork out the cash to have it fixed. She has a newer vehicle to drive with at her house. This post isn't about who has the better vehicle. This is about my daughter's safety and my ex wanting to pawn the car off on her. Expect me to foot the bill. I plan on giving her my car 2021 that I am currently paying on to her when I deem her fit to handle the responsibility of having a vehicle, new, used, or otherwise, she has to prove to me that she can do that. I'm not going to feed into the entitled child syndrome and just hand over a new car to her. My son was lucky enough to get the vehicle new. I'm feeling like the asshole because my daughter doesn't want to say anything to her dad even though she agrees with me. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my teen drive a car given by her dad? Okay. I don't think that you're the asshole because first of all, that car got a goal. 
Is this missing a lot of important things that you need in order to like function a car? I just think that you're just looking out for your daughter and cussing for her safety and want her to drive a nice, good, functioning car. And that's that's being a good mom. That's what being a good mom. And your daughter already agrees with you, so like there's that. But yeah, I just think that you're doing what's best for your daughter and that's understandable. So you're not the asshole. Okay. Am I the asshole for firing my babysitter? Ooh, I want to hear this. Hold on. Hold on. Every Friday evening, my husband and I hire the same babysitter to watch our three boys. Three, five, and seven. While we go out for a date, for the most part, she has been great, shows up on time, the boys love her, and they typically just hang out at home and watch a movie. This past Friday, she had to come a bit early and I had told her that she could take the boys out to the neighborhood playground since they were pretty rambitious. <laughs> the neighborhood playground is maybe a three minute walk from our house. It's small, but the boys enjoy it. She texted me an hour or so after we left and said she was taking the boys to the park. I thanked her for telling me and went back to enjoying my evening out with my husband. When we got home, she gave us a regular report telling us that they were well behaved and had their dinner. As she and I were in the middle of talking, my five-year-old bounced up to me and told me that they had gone to a different park that was a 10-minute drive away. This girl doesn't have a car. We didn't leave her car seat. I looked at her and she told me that her dad had driven them there in his car since there were no other kids at the neighborhood playground. I was immediately irate. I don't know her father or if he had seats for the boys. I hadn't known where they had gone or been asked if she could take the boys to this park. I paid her for her time and told her this would be the last time she babysat my children. Whoop! The girl's father has called me and told me that I'm the asshole for finding her for something as small as taking the boys to the park and called me a controlling helicopter parent my husband and I think we made the right call okay it would have been nice if she would have asked first before taking your kids with her dad to a park that was 10 minutes away so like I understand that because you weren't aware of him and that's your kids and you need to know where your kids are 24 7 so like yeah she should have asked so I don't really think that you're the asshole. You're just looking out for your kids. Because I would do the same thing too, honestly. Like, I would think about it. Like, I would really think about it. And then I'll probably, like, fire her, to be honest with you. But yeah, I feel like if she would have just asked, then it would have just been fine. Because, like, the parents don't even know her father. So, like, that's understandable. Wait a minute. You. Okay, next one. Am I the asshole for wanting to put my father-in-law in a nursing home? About a year ago, my wife Ellie, father's Chris, came back into our lives after abandoning, abandoning Ellie as a child. I was skeptical of his attentions, but Ellie was so happy to have him back in her life that I decided to let her have some time with her dad. However, over the time, Chris has been living with her family I've begun to notice that Ellie has several abandonment issues relating to Chris. So she lets him walk all over us with no precautions. I've tried talking to her about this. Additionally, I've noticed the influence he's had on her son, Danny, who he'd spent a lot of time with. Ever since Chris moved in, Danny has been doing rather poorly in school. In fact, his principal has had to call us in a couple times to discuss Danny's performance in class. I've raised these concerns to Ellie, but she said it wasn't a big deal since he was already struggling in school. And that thanks to Chris, Danny has a true friend for the first time in his life. Recently, Danny's principal called to tell me that Danny's been cutting class lately, having only attended about three days worth of school over the past two weeks. He's been <laughs> spending this time with Chris. This was the last straw for me, and when I got home from work, I told Ellie about what happened and recommended that we put Chris in the nursing home because he's undeniably having 
a poor effect on Danny's future. Ellie wouldn't hear this and called me a monster saying that she wouldn't return the favor by abandoning her own dad. First of all, he has a really bad influence on your son Danny which is making him miss school and just having a bad performance in class. And second of all, he's literally doing whatever he wants and that's because your wife, Ellie, is letting him because he knows that she's not going to do anything. <laughs> And this isn't just about Ellie, it's also about your son because the influence that he's having on him. And I think that it's good that, you know, even though you were skeptical about his attentions, you still allowed him to stay just for Ellie. But yeah, ever since he came back, he has done nothing but the absolute word. So like, I feel like you're not the asshole. Send that boy back to the nursing home. Send him back. Actually, he was never there. So yeah, put that... Put that man in that nursing home ASAP. I second that motion. <laughs> because actions do speak louder than words. And his actions are really doing it. And Ellie, she's just going to get over it. Like, she'll be alright. She'll realize later on that you were just doing it. In the best intentions or whatever. So yeah, she'll forgive you. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I am editing right now, but I had an afterthought. I definitely feel like boundaries need to be set. And if the father doesn't respect those boundaries and if he keeps, you know, going with his actions the way that he is right now, maybe, yeah, send him to the nursing home. But I wouldn't, you know, pick that as a first option. At the end of the day, it is Ellie's father. But I get that, you know, you want the best for her and your son. So, yeah. If he doesn't respect those boundaries and if he keeps just stepping on them, send him. Okay, next one. Am I the asshole for calling my girlfriend dumb for wearing heels on a trip? Not you calling your girlfriend dumb. Shut your s Okay, let's read this. I am 28 years old, male, recently went on the trip with my girlfriend, 27. To New York City, I have only been once but never did any touristy stuff and my girlfriend has never been. My girlfriend is very vain and wouldn't be caught dead without makeup. We did not have much luggage space as our airline charges for everything so we went light. She took up all her space packing multiple shoes that were high heels and had no space for sneakers and then wore heels to the airport. <laughs> That's so funny. All four to five inches heel. I'm hollering. I told her that was incredibly dumb and that she wouldn't be able to walk everywhere in those and made a bet that she'd have to buy sneakers. She got upset at me and told me she can wear what she likes and asked if I am insecure because she's taller than me in heels, which I'm not. Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. We did a lot of walking and had to walk besides her in her heels and met Art Gallery, the Bronx Zoo, Central Park, Brooklyn Bridge, etc. And it was ridiculous. She didn't buy sneakers, but I feel like there's no way it was comfortable. And had I not mentioned it, she would have brought them and only didn't to spite me. We finished the trip and claims that I was the one who was too tired just because I got bored of the mat and she did. A little more than me and I didn't want to go everywhere she wanted to in Central Park and called me an asshole for not believing in her. Hey, first of all, you made your first mistake by calling her dumb because why are you calling your girlfriend dumb? <laughs> Leave that man ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> you are definitely the asshole. Duh. Am I the asshole for calling my girlfriend dumb? Does it? Does it? That's it. You're done get off i feel like you are insecure that she's taller than you in heels because like guys my camera died but let's continue am i the asshole for locking my bedroom door so my cousins can't get in honestly i don't think i'm wrong at all in this situation but everyone in my family except for my mom is angry at me so i need outside perspective i live with my grandma and aunt from my dad's side of the family this year i spent christmas with them so on the 26th of December, I decided to go with my mom and my little cousin to the mall so I could spend some time with my mom before she had to go back to the city she lives. When I left home, I didn't close my bedroom door because it was 
cleaning day and the nice lady who cleans her house hasn't cleaned my bedroom yet. The thing is, my cousin Anne, 40 years old, female, and her husband and two kids, Daniel, 9 years old, and Leah, 3 years old, were staying at the house for a few days. And because of that, my other cousin Kate, 10 year old, was also staying for a while so the kids can see each other and play together. When I came home to the mall, it was already 9 p.m. And my bedroom that was supposed to be clean was a mess. My bed was all dirty, paper and marks of peppermint pen everywhere. And they had opened a very expensive body scrub I had just bought and hadn't even used it yet. And not only threw it all over the floor, but also got water on it. Lord, so it was ruined. I immediately started crying. I was so tired and hadn't slept in two days due to bad anxiety. And all I wanted was to shower and go to sleep. And now I had to clean my entire room by myself because the kids and their parents were nowhere to be seen. I felt so angry. Like they had no respect and consideration for me at all. I talked about it with my grandma and all she could come up with was they're just kids. My aunt heard me talking and got angry at me because they're her precious granddaughter. The end, she told me just to start locking my bedroom door, so that, that's what I did. But now everyone is angry. The kids don't have access to my bedroom anymore. My grandpa keeps telling me not to be angry at the kids and stuff. I guess I just need someone to tell me I'm not wrong in feeling like this. So am I the asshole for locking my bedroom door and not allowing my cousins to get in? Okay, as someone who also locks their door so my siblings can get in, I understand you because, oh my god because literally I've called my siblings coming in my room so many times but I didn't have any proof so guess what I decided to do I decided to buy a camera from Amazon yup I did that so I bought a camera from Amazon and I planted it actually I didn't even plant it I just put it right there didn't even try to hide it nothing I just put it right there and then I'm at work I come home I check the camera and I see two of my siblings in my room looking around my freaking room and touching stuff and stole some snacks that was already meant for them like honestly <laughs> so yeah i understand you completely i don't think you're the asshole because you just value your own personal space and i feel like your parents should get that and i feel like it's necessary for you to have your own personal space and for your parents or your siblings to accept that but damn girl they messed up your whole room shoot i will be crying too i'll be angry but at the end of the day there are kids, but their parents should go talk to them and tell them that it's not okay for you to do that because it's not your stuff and it's not your house. Like, but yeah, I feel like it would be good for the parents to talk to the kids about what they did because it doesn't matter if it's your cousin, your dad, your grandpa, whatever. Respect other people's boundaries, period. To your room, you have the right to lock your bedroom door and yeah. Okay, this might be the last one, but I don't know if I want to do one more. Am I the asshole for taking money from a friend? Don't want to make this too long, so it'll be short and sweet. My blank friend called Jim asked me to borrow $200 last September to cover for his portion of the a birthday dinner tab. I kept asking him for it and he kept telling me, I'll get it to you or, or give me some time to get my shit together and I'll give it to you. Or I'll get it to you. I got tired of asking and after three months, I learned that Jay is owed some money by another friend. Call him C, who is also a good friend of mine. I decided to be petty and told C to give me 200 from the money he owed Jay and to give him the rest and that Jay said it was cool. C believed me and gave me the money. Now Jay's mad at me because he's down 200 I told him to suck it up and haven't spoken to him since. I know lying was a dick move, but I don't really feel like an asshole, so I'm not the asshole. This is so funny because like Jay cuz why are you mad at him? You owe him money in the first place so like it was a smart move I'm not gonna lie it was a smart move so I don't think you're the asshole because he literally owes you money and he's been saying for the past months or whatever that oh I got you I got you I got you and nothing but at the end of the day you got what you were owed and that's that it is what it is it is what it is okay, I'm gonna do one more Am I the asshole for wanting my niece to apologize? I am 19 years old, male, have a niece, let's call her Macy, who is 4 years old. She's going through a phase where she's very blunt, just kind of says whatever is on her mind. Not a phase, I'm weak. <laughs> Recently, she's decided to say that my girlfriend has a big booty, right to her face. 
I immediately told her that it's rude to say something like that and told her that she needed to say sorry to my girlfriend. But my sister insisted that Macy didn't need to apologize as she's only four and didn't mean to hurt her feelings. Apparently my expectations of a child that age are way too high for expecting an apology. Am I the asshole for wanting my niece to apologize for something she said? I feel like it also depends if your girlfriend was offended when Macy said that. Okay, she is four years old and I don't think that she meant it in like a malicious way. But the right thing to do would be her mom talking to Macy about how she shouldn't say things like that to people because how they might take it. So yeah, I think the mother should just have a conversation to her. Even though she's four years old, I feel like she will understand. Not completely understand, but like have an idea of like what to not say to people. So the mom better get to it and not ignore this problem. Okay, that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, make sure you guys like, comment, and share. Don't forget to click the link down in the description box and get up to 25% off on these beautiful high quality pieces. Mwah. Bye.